Okay. Now I want you people to divide the hospital up amongst yourselves. I want officers on all the exits, the entrances, the corridors, the elevators. I want somebody on the roof and somebody in the basement. And I want somebody on the inside and the outside of ICU. Any questions? No, sir. No. All right. You see anything suspicious at all, and I mean anything, you tell me about it. Take your posts. Frisco, I don't understand this. Why all the protection? Scorpio is turning this hospital into an armed camp. What does he think's gonna happen? I don't know. I just hope we don't find out the hard way. Well, I should do it. Robert, really? Well, look, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, Dan, but under the circumstances. Even so, isn't this a bit much? Look, you know I wouldn't take such drastic steps unless I thought it was absolutely necessary. How long will we have to put up with this? Until Tony has recovered enough to tell me what he knows. Well, that could be quite a while. For all their sakes, let's hope it's not long. Well, how are we supposed to function? This place looks like a jail. Dan, I have no intention of keeping people inside. I just want to keep the assailant out. Listen. Somebody bungled Tony's murder once. I have no intention of giving him a second chance. Wait, I don't believe this. You still think that Tony was the target? Yes. What? But I don't understand why. Well, we're still trying to figure that out. No, no, nobody would want to kill my brother. Tony hasn't got an enemy in the entire world. I'm betting he made one, and recently. No, 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 you're, you're reaching now, man. Uh -uh. Look, I am convinced that Peter told Tony something important, very important, and it was about the treasure. This is crazy! Listen, someone was willing to kill to keep this bit of information quiet the same way that Peter killed to get it. But who? I don't know, and I wish I knew. But all I know is there's somebody out there watching and waiting, and I have no intention of giving them a second chance. Shattering everyone like this? You didn't tell your husband tells us otherwise, Mrs. Scorpio. Oh, well, I'm sure he has his reasons. Yes, ma'am. Oh. <coughs> ah. Hi. Hi. I just heard about Tony. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? <gasps> oh, I'm so happy oh, for you. I feel you. like I've come out of one of the longest nightmares I've ever had. It's not over yet. <laughs> yeah, but at least there's a change for the better. Right. Well, what brings you by? Well, I called your office, and all your secretary would say was you were at the hospital, so I thought something terrible had happened, and I came right over, but they told me the good news downstairs. Yeah, well, because of this good news, I've now placed uh, General Hospital under the heaviest security. And so I noticed. You expecting something? I want to be prepared for anything. Tony is going to have every chance to recover. Well, from the look of this place, I'm sure he will. Excuse me, Mrs. Jones. Oh, Dr. Palmer. Is he all right? He's about the same. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? It's better. When can I see him? Now. Now? Just for a brief period of time. Okay, I understand. Oh. Say hello for me, okay? Hello. Look, I'm not going to be delayed here for a while. So I'm going to check everything out and make sure that Tony has every possible piece of protection. Well, I'll wait for you. Well, I could be, uh, I could be held up for quite a while. Oh, I'll find something to do. Holly. I'm going out of my mind. Would you join me for a cup of coffee, please? Great. All right. I'll see you later. Uh, Frisco. Yeah. While you're at it, make it two cups. You're a mess. <laughs> He's right. I imagine uh, Tony's improvement must change things a lot. Some things, yeah. Some things, no. Definitely not the person who got us into this mess. <laughs>
Can you hear me? I love you very much. More than anything. You're going to be all right. You're going to be back up on your feet in no time at all. You got to get well. For me and for the baby. I can't live without you, Tony. I've been alone. Or it seems like I've been alone most of my life. You've brought me warmth and love and companionship. And I'm not going to let you get away. I want you to live. Come back to me, please. Oh, oh Tony. You can hear me. You can hear me. You're going to live. You're going to live. the police were stationed around the hospital, I had no idea you meant in such numbers. This is a full alert. Why? They got a special patient in ICU, Dr. Anthony Jones. I don't understand. The commissioner thinks whoever shot him the first time may try again. What? If he does, he's in for a big surprise. Somebody's trying to kill Tony? Trying and doing are two different things. better? Oh, much better, thank you. And thank you for being so patient. It was so good to talk to him. Did he move or utter any sounds? Yeah, he did both. He moved a little bit, and then when I was talking to him, he made a sort of groaning-like sound. Isn't that great? It's certainly an improvement. Oh, he heard me. Well, I... perhaps you're right. Why else would he answer me? It could have been just an involuntary response. Oh, no. He definitely heard me. He's coming out of the coma. I know it. Tanya. Won't he? Won't he? I hope so. He will. Listen to me. The last thing that I want to do is dampen your enthusiasm. Is something wrong? No. But I just think that perhaps you're making too much of this. Making too much of my husband's life? No, his progress. Well, you're the one who said he was improving. And that's true. I did, but just slightly. So, what... Tanya, what I'm trying to say is simply that a lot of things could still happen. I know that. Not all of them good. What do you... Does this fall into the category of... Telling the next of kin? No. I'm just trying to keep you abreast of the situation. I know. I appreciate it. Excuse me a minute, Doctor. Thank you, Jim. I'd like to know about his condition. You want me to answer your question for you, Felicia? Tanya. You want to know what kind of condition my husband is in? Yes, how is he? He is in a coma. I'd heard he'd taken a, a change for the better. He has. But only that if he does get better, he might get shot again. And the guard told me. Have you happened to notice all the guards around here? It's for no one else's benefit but for his. He, um... He's lucky if he survives what happened. And then he's got this to look forward to. What else might happen? I don't know what to say. I think you've said enough. I'm sick and tired of listening to your little sniveling. Some gunman might be out there coming in here trying to kill him. I'm so sorry. A lot of good that does now. The 
there's nothing I can say to make it better. <laughs> no, this is just the way I feel. And it's not going to change. Frisco is right. You and your greed for that stupid treasure. They've caused so much suffering for everyone. And it's not even over yet. why I ever felt sorry for you, Felicia. But I don't feel sorry for you anymore. What do you want? I came by to see it about Tony. And it's... And to say again how sorry I am. I, I'm... All I right. feel really... You said it. Anything I can say or do to make up to this. I want you out of my life. Let's go down to this. I love you. Will you ever remember that? You know what the man said. Hey, I don't give a damn what he said. He's the boss. Oh, that makes him right 100% of the time, right? Well, he's not too thrilled when you take matters into your own hands. Somebody's got to do something. Donnie may not be concerned about Tony Jones pulling through, but I sure as hell am. Yeah, well, you're not the only one. If that doctor opens his mouth, I've had it. And so have you two. Not to mention Donnie. Is that a chance that you're willing to take? I don't see how we can. Morgan? It's risky. Risky? It's suicide. What do you got in mind? The only chance that we have. I say we finish off Tony Jones right now. You know, I'm inclined to agree. If we could pull this off clean, they have no way of, uh, of tracing this to us at all. I guarantee it. Right. It would take a weight off if uh, Jones was out of the way. <laughs> you know, Donnie might even give us a bonus, huh? Okay, Slater, I'm with you. Me too. Good, I knew you would be. When do we make our move? As soon as possible. The longer Tony Jones lives, the better chance he has to ruin our scam. And I'm not about to let that happen. Thank you for letting me know. Felicia, I, uh, I need to talk to you just as soon as you're free. Mm -hmm. What is it? I have to go back to the hacienda. The, the woman who's been running the place for me has some illness in her family. And she has to leave tomorrow. I don't want you to go, Grandmother. I need you. Felicia, the only sensible thing for you to do is to leave Port Charles with me today. Jones's recuperative powers are very impressive, you know that? Agreed. Sasha, wait. What is it, Rick? Look. His vital signs are continuing to improve, and we've just noticed eye movement. Eye movement? Did he see you? No, he's still unconscious, but this kind of movement signals the fact that he might be coming out of it soon. Can we go in and see him now? Yeah, but... One, One at, at a time. time. Right. Go ahead, Tony. This is Jurgens on 10 outside ICU. I want a replacement up here for me right away. I've got to get in touch with Commissioner Scorpio. I'll be there in five minutes. Be here in two minutes. I can't leave my post until another guard takes over. Hey, wait a minute. Is, is my brother's improvement the reason for the increase in security? You can bet on it. Stationed at the entrances. Here, here, here. Well, you are sorry. I just hope nothing happens in Port Charles to make me pull men off this detail. You really think that even with all this added security that there's going to be another attempt on Tony's life? If he keeps showing signs of improvement, the answer to that is yes. There is nothing for you here in Port Charles. Look at it this way. If I do leave, I'm just running away from my responsibilities. It's hopeless, 
for you if you stay here. I'm talking about the people I've hurt. I don't know how I'm going to do it, Grandmother, but I have to make amends somehow. But do you really think that your staying here is going to help Tanya and Frisco? I don't know yet. I have to, I have to see what happens. Well, the thing that worries me is that your being here might make it worse. And for you, too. You know, the longer you stay, the harder it's going to be for you to begin a new life. New life? I love Frisco. And I'm not going to give him up. Oh, please, dear. You're going to break your heart. Don't do this to yourself. Sometimes we can't always recapture what we've lost. Sometimes we just have to try to begin again. I don't know, Grandmother. You know, sometimes a, a broken relationship just can't be repaired. Sometimes you have to start fresh. And Felicia, if Tony doesn't make it, that's... that's what Frisco and Tanya are going to have to do. Start fresh. It'll never be the same for you and Frisco. I want to go to the hospital and speak to uh, Tanya just before I leave. I want to go to the hospital with you. Right, and be rebuffed again by Frisco. No, I just want to see how Tony's doing. And I can't believe it's hopeless for me. Well, we'll soon know, won't we? Just a moment, please. Oh, oh, we were cleared downstairs. Yes, I know, but when you reach the tent, we have to check you again. Oh. All right, they're uh, on Commissioner Scorpio's list for the 10th floor. Okay. You understand? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Felicia. Yes? Don't you think it would be better, perhaps, if you wait out here until I've seen Frisco and Tanya? Well, I don't want to upset them. All right, then you, you better wait here. Somewhere. I don't care how unimportant it seems to be. I want every entrance and exit placed under surveillance. Basement to roof. Let's go for a walk and see what might have missed. Hiya. How was the visit? Oh, it was good. It was good. His color is better. And he did a little more of that eye movement that they were talking yeah. about before. Next hour when I go in, I'm going to try to hold his hand and see if he can't hear me. Well, oh, Frisco, I did that. I said, hold my hand and if you hear me, squeeze. He's going to hear us real soon, Tanya. I yeah. think so. I know it. Oh, Mariah came by to say goodbye and to invite Tony and I to come down to the Hacienda when he's recuperating. Oh. That was very nice of you, Mariah. Oh, when your brother and Tanya are two of my favorite honeymooners. We'll miss you. Well, you must come down and visit me, too. And now, Frisco, there's something else I want to say. What? Felicia is here with me. She's waiting out of the nurse's station. There is nothing in the world that she wants more than to make amends. Mariah, this is nothing against you, believe me. But the first amends Felicia could make is to stay away from me and Tanya. I understand. Improving. Thank God. But your leaving Port Charles with me today, Felicia. It's hopeless for you. She's not here, but I expect her very soon. Can I take a message? No, thanks. I'm in January. I'll just drop by. Okay. Hi, Holly. Hi, Ruby. How can I do for you? Maybe some breakfast? Um, no, thank you, but some coffee would be lovely. I was hoping to see Felicia. She's not here. I expect her back shortly. Also, she just got a phone call. She's at the hospital with her grandmother. Mariah has to go back to Texas today. Oh, that's a shame. Felicia must need her right now. Yes, she really does. Here they are. All right, now, Felicia, I'm going upstairs to pack, and I suggest you do the same thing. Hello. Oh, hello, Holly. I hear you have to go back. Yes, I do. And you too, Felicia? Uh, yes, Grandmother thinks it's best. Uh, do you have a minute before you pack? Sure. 
Yeah. All right, then if you'll excuse me, I'll go ahead and get at it. Can I help you, Mariah? Oh, yes, please, Ruby. Come on. Sure. Do you really have to go back to Texas? My grandmother thinks it's hopeless here. I'd like to uh, talk to you for a minute, if you don't mind, before you make this move. Well, I don't really think there's anything to talk about, Holly. Huh? Is this really what you want to do? My grandmother thinks it's the only thing that I can do. I had some crazy ideas about staying here and trying to make amends, but I think it'll be doing everybody a favor if I just vanish and get out of everybody's hair. I know that feeling, and it's not totally wrong either. And then you have it. There was a time in my life when I had to make amends, too. It wasn't exactly the same situation as you, of course, but I... At the time, it felt as if all the odds were against me, and they were impossible to beat. But you did it? Yes. Because it was just impossible for me not to. That's the way I feel. Do you think that you could ever get over Frisco? No, I'll always love him. No matter what? No matter how hard it is to live with that love? No matter what. Well, then, if that's how you really feel... I do. I know it. Then you mustn't give up. What? You've got to hang in there, no matter how hard it is for you. Even if I've been made to feel that it's hopeless? Yes. Even then. You know, if you really do love someone, I don't think there is any such word as hopeless. I'm in on each shift to beef up security. You really think there's going to be another attempt on his life? As long as it keeps him improving, it's the great danger. Listen, I'm glad you put extra men around here. And, Robert, I want you to know that I'm prepared to stay right at this spot. I won't move. Well, uh, thanks for the offer, Frisco, but uh, we've got men trying to do that, why don't you? Just look after Tanya. I think Tony would want you to do that. Look, I'm just trying to work this out, that's all. Yeah. Tanya, how is he? I saw the eye movement, and he's definitely got more color. Oh. Yeah. Robert, what is it? Is something wrong? No, love. You know, just routine, checking things out. I think it's time that I spoke my piece. Would you mind, please? <sighs> Frisco, I want you to take Tanya home and uh, let her get some rest, please. Well, not just yet. I've got to go back in and visit Tony. I made him a promise. I said I'd be back in an hour. All right, fine. <clears throat> May I ask you something? When was the last time you had something to eat? To eat? Yeah, eat. She hasn't had a decent breakfast, let's put it that way. You know, my friend, you have got to take care of yourself. She's right. I'll take her down to the cafeteria to get some. But you Great. want to see Tony for a few minutes, right? Oh, yeah, I do. All right, why don't you walk with us to the hub, please? I'll be right down. And Robert, thanks for looking after Tony. You can be sure of it, love. I don't like to tell this. Oh, uh, Dr. Palmer, do you have a minute? Yes, what is it? Uh... Is it possible to move Tony to another hospital? I'm suggesting a place in Buffalo. I'd like him out of Port Charles completely. No, Mr. Scorpio. It wouldn't be safe to try to move him. That's what I thought you'd say. Well, when? Well, at the present rate of his progress, uh, he might be able to be moved in five or six days. No sooner? No. So much for that broad idea. No, if we can keep him safe for five or six days, your idea could work. That's strange, isn't it? When we should be celebrating Tony's improvement. In actual fact, we're worried sick about it. I'm with your grandmother. Felicia! My only chance for any kind of future is to stay right here in Port Charles and face the present. But you agree that it was hopeless for you to be here in Port Charles. Mariah, what? Some of this is my doing. But you caused her to change your mind? No, she gave me hope. Oh, Felicia. I really, I, I haven't time now to talk to you about this I'll anymore. Okay, really. You know what you're up against. Better than anyone. All right. I'm going to take you to the airport. Oh, all right. Well, then we can talk about this some more on the way. Ruby, dear, thank you so much for looking after me and Felicia. My pleasure. You come back here soon. Oh, yeah. you're a dear. You're so kind. And Holly, please say goodbye to Robert for me, will you? We're going to miss you, Mariah. Oh, thank you, dear. And also, will you please tell Robert that if I hear anything more about Peter and his friends, that I'll get in touch. All right, I'll tell him. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. I'll be back. I must say, your men have been doing all they can not to upset hospital routine. Glad to hear it. And I'll pass the word. Hi. Ah, Amy. I'm off to lunch. Anything unusual happen on your ship this morning? Well, not really. Just a bunch of cops rambling around. 
Anything else you want to know? Not at the moment. Thank you. As I recall, Amy talks a lot. Oh, she's a trained nurse, Robert. She knows what's important and what's not. Anything uh, happening up here, Murphy? Not a lot of things, sir. Good. Jesse, any new patients on the 10th? Uh, no, no new admissions, but I kept a list of incoming phone calls. How do the names check out? Well, it may seem kind of silly, but there's one name I'd like you to take a look at. It's Leonard Harvey. He called and he said um, that he'd been a patient of Tony's. And the minute I had a chance, which was about a minute ago, I called admission and had them check, and there's no record of Tony's ever having a patient by that name. I see. I couldn't find it in the telephone book, and I tried information, nothing. Did you get a sense of his age from his voice? Well, it wasn't an old voice, but that's all I can be sure of, and I had the feeling that... I can't even be sure of that. Tell me. Well, I just had a feeling that he was putting on some kind of an act, and that's an awfully hard thing to pinpoint. No, oh, but it fits with the rest of it. I maintain that probably some of these other calls are phony as well, but at least you've pinned down one of them, and I appreciate that. Right now, I'd do anything in the world for Tony. I know. That's why we're all here. Well, what do you think? First, Jesse Brewer is a very bright person. Secondly, somebody out there is worried about whether Tony lives or not. Do you uh, think it's that man named Peter that everybody's talking about? I doubt it. He's on the run and with good cause. Ouch. You all right? You cut yourself? No, I'm fine. Mine was just somewhere else. Same with mine. Frisco, if I could only see some improvement for myself. Doctors keep saying that, that his vital signs are getting better. But I go in there, and he's looking terrible, and he's in a coma. Tanya, the doctors have to know what they're talking about. No, I know. I realize that. But what if his vital signs keep getting better, and they show up on their little machines, and he doesn't come out of the coma. What if he's just alive? I, I don't want to talk about that right now, okay? Frisco, we have to talk about it! That was all... That was all the milk. <laughs> Honey, I uh, understand what you're trying to do, but I really think if you bring Frisco a care package right now, he's going to dump it all over your head. Well, I didn't intend to take it. Oh? Well, I thought you would. It's your food. Just don't tell them I packed it, all right? It's very sweet of you. Okay, I'll do it. Thanks, Ruby. You know, I don't know why he's being so bullheaded about this. I mean, you didn't shoot to me. Yes, but I'm responsible, and that's just as bad. I don't blame Frisco for the way he feels. Even not talking to you at all? I think he will one day. That's if Tony recovers. I had a long talk with Holly, and she, um... Uh, Kind of help me put things in the right perspective. What does that mean? I think there's a chance for Frisco and me. That's if Tony recovers. And in the meantime, I'm just trying to make amends for myself, if not for anyone else. Well, that's the power of positive thinking. Okay, I'll take it for you. I worry about Tanya with the baby. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go off like that at you. Come on. If anybody has a right to let off a little steam, you do. That's all it is. It's just nerves, then. Oh, I just feel so weird, Frisco. All these emotions. Fear that maybe, maybe Tony won't come out of the coma. I'm afraid that maybe, maybe he won't make it at all. And angry, Frisco. I am so damn angry! Good. Angry because it's needless. The whole thing is... Look at this. Neither one of us has worked since the whole thing has happened. I know. I have patients at the hospital, patients who need me. You need, you have people at your job who need you too. Yeah, I suppose so. All because some person, what he did, that we don't even know. Look at us, we're just, we, 
existing. It's a disgusting, dirty place with all the mail piled up all over the place and food. We don't even have any food left at the refrigerator. I know. I know. Frisco, all because, all because your brother, my husband, wanted to help someone. He gets shot. And not only does he get hit, but we all get hit, every one of us. And life comes to a standstill. The simplest things seem impossible to do. But we're gonna, we're gonna try to do them. Okay? We should really, we should try to do them. Go on with our lives, you mean? <laughs> what am I even talking about? I can't do that. I know. You can't. And I can't. We can't do anything until Tony's recovered. We both know that. Oh, uh, I... I know it. I know it, too. Tanya. He's coming out of the coma. And we're gonna be there when he does. Aren't we? Yeah. All right. We have to be for school. We have to be. All right. Tell him what you look for. Have we brought us some food from the diner? The sandwiches look great here. That was real thoughtful of you. I'm gonna That's break my good. word, but I can't really take credit for this. It was. Felicia's idea, and she prepared the food. Ruby. Take this back to Felicia and tell her that I would gag on everybody. I'm sorry, Frisco. Yeah. Be there again. Yeah, I'll take you down. See you later. What are you doing here? I asked you, what are you doing here? I wanted to help. I see that. Why, Felicia? Why? I know you spend a lot of time at the hospital, and I thought I would come here and help by cleaning up your apartment. I was going to leave as soon as I finished. As of now, we're finished. I, I was just trying to make things easier for you. There, there are no strings attached. Can't you get it straight? I don't need you to clean my apartment. I don't want you to fill baskets of food and send them to the hospital or do anything else for me. Can't I get that through your head? I'll go. Wait a minute. What? Before you go, I want you to leave the key to this apartment. I don't want to come home here to any more little surprises. Um, you know, I might drop out of school. I don't give a damn if you drop us to face it here. I just... I thought I should let you know. Hey, don't confuse me with Donnelly, okay? He's the one who made the little investment. You tell him. He's been out of town, but I'll tell him. Those are key. I don't understand you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I just told you that you could drop off the face of the earth. Why didn't you go home with Mariah? You know me. When I truly believe in something, I don't give up. And I won't give up. And there's something I have to know. What? How's Tony? <sighs> He's holding his own. Maybe a little better.
I'm glad. That must give you a little comfort. Yeah. Listen, you take comfort, too. Okay, because if you're lucky, someday you're going to let yourself off the hook for putting him into the coma. I did what I did, but I didn't... Just go! Would you just... Just go. All right. You have to understand that I didn't know that there was a man outside that window. Okay. We'll do. See you later. First of all, good news. Good news? I saw Tony today. While I was talking to him, he moved his hand. Oh, Tony. Oh, that's, oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. So if he moved his hand today, maybe tomorrow he'll move his arm, and then maybe he'll move his head, oh, and maybe... Yes, he's going to do it all. He's going to get better, Tanya. I'm telling you, he's going to get better. And every time that you hear of any kind of change, you promise me you're going to call me. Promise me. Call you? Yeah, Derek came by today. And? I'm going to work tomorrow. Oh, I see. Yeah. Are you, um, <clears throat> are you doing this for me because you think I need the money? I'm doing it for myself. I've been thinking, and you know when a crisis hits, anybody can drop life. But if a crisis hits, and you can stand up and look it in the eye and handle it, then you can go on with your life. I can see that. And the bottom line is I have a contract and I have responsibilities too. You're right, you do. Besides, Work might be good therapy. Well, what about me? Do you think I should go back to work, too? No, Tanya. You're the only thing Tony really has in his life. You're what he wants, and your job is to be there for him. Oh, Frisco, I'm glad you said that, because I don't think I could go to work. But hey, it doesn't mean I can't work around here. I can clean up. Next time, don't bother to clean up. I'll clean up. I, I didn't clean up. Felicia did. What? Yeah, I came home here and she had cleaned the whole place. Well, what would make her do that? Well, obviously, she's trying to make up for what happened to Tony. But, uh, I bet she can't ever do. Coming through loud and clear. I'm switching you off now. I'm on 10 if you need me. Well, no quad on this one. Yeah. Anything unusual popped up? Nothing and no one, sir. Good. Back again. Yes, Commissioner. Any calls on Dr. Jones? Well, I've been keeping the list as you requested. Good. Keep it up. Instruct any and all replacements. Right. Uh, Dr. Palmer, I'd like to see him. Uh, he He's with Dr. Weber in Dr. Jones's room. Thank you. Did he come out of the coma? No, his vital signs happen to be very strong. As you know, we're getting continued signs of progress. Oh, that's so encouraging. Oh, it is. We're tremendously encouraged. Robert, sounds like good news. Yes, to say the least, it is. Dr. Palmer? Commissioner? Yeah. I don't want to interrupt the prognosis, please. It's all right, I was just wrapping it up for Tanya and Frisco. If this keeps up this way, Tony may come out of the coma short. Oh, how wonderful. He will, Tanya. Oh. He's going to make it. Isn't that the greatest news, Robert? Yes, it is indeed. <laughs> well, can I go in and see him now? Of course you can. Indeed, but as usual, keep it briefly. Okay, well, what, what about a little longer than five minutes? Tim, each of you. Great, I've got so much I want to tell him. Maybe, uh, maybe I ought to give you my ten minutes, huh? But why? I'm supposed to be over at the university. They're setting up for the show tomorrow, and I'm already late as it is. All right, then you better get going. Tell him I'll... Be back soon, will you? Okay, let's go. Now, come on. Let's go. All right. Bye, gentlemen. Hey, Randy. Oh, hi, let's go. Hi, doctors. That's funny. I just saw Frisco. He seemed pretty happy. And he's every right to. 
The doctor's maintained Tony could be coming out of his coma soon. Oh, then that's why. All right, let's drop the happy front, gentlemen. In view of this continued progress of Tony's, I'm more concerned than ever. Me too. How, how do we keep news of this progress under wraps? How oh, indeed? You saying it can't be done? Well, well it isn't possible. And all the manpower we've enlisted still is not enough, Dr. Palmer. Well, I'm not saying it's impossible, but my experience at hospitals, keeping something quiet like this, uh, this magnitude, this kind of publicity, everybody's trying to get into the act. I couldn't agree more, Robert. I'm sorry. Well, everybody that has access to Tony or his records has been briefed, and the continued police presence should be a constant reminder. Oh, they see us. They get the message, all right. Yeah, poor Tony. Pity he can't get the message. Somebody out there wants to kill him to keep him from telling us what he knows. You have to listen to me. The table's yours, I'm leaving. I owe you an explanation and you owe me the courtesy to listen to me. I owe you? Yes, you made an accusation. Now listen to me. I was talking to my professor. I'm giving up my Aztec studies at the end of the semester. Really? I was talking to my professor about makeup tests and papers. That surprises me, Felicia. What do you mean? Well, why didn't you use your talents, huh? I don't understand. Your charms. Why didn't you use them? You are a good user. Why didn't you connive your professor into getting out of the tests or not having to write the paper? I couldn't do that. Why not? Huh? You're not above using a professor, are you? I mean, not above somebody else like everybody else in your life. I don't know what you're saying. I'm saying that you would use anybody and anything to get what you want. That's not true. You used me, didn't you? No, I didn't use you. Well, then what the hell do you call it? Huh? Well, you were on the run, I protected you. I took everything that you dished out to me. I put my life completely on hold because of you. You wanted to help me. Oh, yes, I wanted to. I mean, look at you, Princess. Who wouldn't want to help you? Huh? You had me bouncing around like a yo-yo. I'm surprised anybody in my life still talks to me. I lied for you. I snuck around for you. I did everything I could to keep you safe. The only thing I couldn't do was get you the treasure. I never demanded you do any of that. No! No, you got Donnelly. You got him to do it for you because of the treasure. You got him footing the bill for your tuition because you want to get the treasure. I wanted the treasure for my grandmother in the hacienda. You wanted it for you. You used your grandmother. You used her love and you used her hospitality. Back then is my home. No. no. Only when you need it. But you don't need it now because you have Ruby. So now you can use Ruby. That's not fair. Well, that's tough. You're distorting everything. I am seeing you the way that you are. You want me to spell it out for you, Felicia? User. No, don't say that. User. No, I won't listen to you. You listen to me. Because the worst part is that you used Tony. Uh, yeah, I have an alumni schedule here. There's going to be a lot of them around the campus tomorrow, but we'll take most of the shots at the rally. How many minutes worth do you need? Um, I mean about ten. You have to be as, as good, if not as, as better than a music video, all right? So give me double what I want, and then I'll make the choices. Maybe we should scout the locations. Yeah, I have a map here. I've pinpointed where the rally's gonna be, and I've also circled a couple of the other hot spots. See? You guys go check that out, and I'll be here. Okay. Yeah. Who's here? I don't have to look, Josh. I thought maybe, maybe Felicia might... What? Maybe, maybe she might want to talk to you. No. 
Corey. Josh, can we stick to the subject, the show, the alumni rally, making a living? Let's get the whole damn thing together, all right? Now sit down. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Okay, fellas, come on, we gotta get to work. And Josh, come on, I gotta talk to you about this. Are you just gonna walk around here and ignore? No. Thank you. I'm going to work on the logistics of my show. That's what I'm trying to do. Would you like to help me? That's why I called you over here. Great. I don't know. I'm sorry. I just, I just find it hard to believe you get out of your system that fast. Really? Why? I don't know. You guys are so close, you know? I don't can tell, uh, tell what happened. What happened was pretty major, Josh. Yeah. All right, look. I wanted to talk to you about this area. As a gal, Michael. Robert, is, is Tony safe? Has something happened? Everything's... Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's no problem. Do you have any new leads or anything? Not at the moment, but we're on top of it all. We've doubled the guard, too. That's good. Anything from Dr. Palmer? Or Not as yet, but the minute I know something, uh, I'll tell you. On the other hand, if you know something, you'll tell me. All right? Thanks. Got a few minutes to talk? Sure. If I'm interrupting. No, I was just waiting on my camera. Got a few minutes to talk? Sure. If I'm interrupting. No, I was just waiting on my camera. I have an appointment to my mate. I'd um, like to ask you a few questions about Peter. Uh, you know that he's left the country. And at this stage, there's not much chance of us catching him. He can't get away with what he did. No, hopefully. But maybe you can help. Oh. You can tell me about the uh, wounds that Peter had, the ones that Tony treated. Uh, what were they? See. Think very carefully about this because it's important. He was crippling one leg and he had a limp. Were we? Wait. How could you tell that? When he first came in, you said he collapsed. Yeah, we should have. He took a few steps. It was a limp. Probably the last plunge he took out of the waterfall. Yeah. He also had a bandage. He has a bandage on his shoulder. Which side? Um, it was the right side. It had to be the right side, right? Because he was bleeding very badly from another wound, and that was on the right side, too. Very good, Felicia. Now, are you sure it was a knife wound? I remember Tony saying so. Why? It's a theory I'm working on. I'm sorry I'm late, Felicia. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Pryor. Uh, you must be the police commissioner. Yes. The counselor. I sure hope you get the guy that shot that doctor from jail. Are <laughs> well, we doing our best? Uh, Felicia, if I need you for anything else. Oh, I'll be around here all day, or you can leave a message at Kelly's. Bye. Bye. Hey, Frisco, you got the extra hand mic? Frisco. What? The extra hand mic. Move that, move that. What do you want? The hand mic. Here. Ah. Oh. Sorry, eh? Hi, Robert. You finished doing that uh, checking of the hospital security? Yeah, everything seemed okay, and we tightened up that loose grill on the window. Boy, that grill disturbs me. Oh, come on. It could have just been some overzealous reporter trying to crack security. Or the killer trying to get back in to finish the job. Oh? Well, what do you think of us? The killer. Why? Fits in with my new theory. Oh, and pray tell, what is that, Master? You remember, uh, a couple of months ago, the van that was knifed? Uh, the guy who went after Felicia at the New York Museum? Right. He went after Felicia in order to get that um, treasure ring from her. Yeah, and we found Peter's Texas phone number in his wallet. So, there's a connection between Van and Peter. I don't see what's that got to do with Tony and the killer. Van and Peter were knifed. Oh, well, a knife isn't an uncommon weapon. Peter was after the treasure, and we're pretty sure that Van was too. And working with Peter. Well, let's assume there's someone else involved. Someone here in Port Charles. But that could explain why Peter came here. Let's say this man knifed Van. Let's say he also knifed Peter. Let's say that Peter tells Tony who knifes him. But the guy's sitting outside the Pullman car window taking it all in, so he shoots Tony in order to protect himself. Yeah, and now, you think you better talk to Steve Hardy about this. Hey, what you got? This is delivery from Frisco Jones. Coffee and cookies. Yeah? 
Uncle Frisco, do you order any coffee? No, this is a gift. What? Oh, yeah? Hey, someone's looking out for us, huh, guy? Yeah. Who sent it? Hey, pour me a cup, would you? I'm kind of faint. Yeah, here, set it down the refreshment table. Check this out. It's a Frisco Jones from two great alumni. <laughs> Cute. Well, it doesn't know. include the pot. Gotcha. How about that? Um, well, I'd love to get you a cup, but it looks like that coffee's for Frisco and his crew. Right. Is that what they call star treatment? I guess. Did you know I changed my major? It's ambrosia. Hey, fellas, listen up about those closing shots at the rally. I think what we ought to do is take the two roving cameras, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to move those into, like, the center of the rally. Felicia, some coffee? Thank you, Josh. Sure. Um, uh, so my friend? Oh, yeah, here. Take mine. Uh, no, that's okay. I just want a half a cup anyway. No, really, here. I mean, I, I don't need any more caffeine today, I'm telling you. Thanks. Yeah. What's wrong? You like your caffeine, huh? Yes. Some people think it's poison. I like my poison in small doses. Uh, yeah. yeah, we need an ambulance over here right away. What? Oh, thanks. Frisco, I, I got, they say I gotta call General. Oh. Oh. Hello? Yeah, listen, uh, we, need a, we need an ambulance right away. Yeah, over at the university. The student union. Right, I, I don't know, there's like five or six people and they're really sick. It's just stomach flu or something. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, quick, okay? Thanks. Hold on, you guys. There's an ambulance coming. There is. Oh. Welcome, alumni. frequent now? No. Sorry. Same as before. Everybody couldn't Dr. have gotten Palmer? all so once. Dr. Right, Dr. Palmer, I check with the lab. lab. We'll get back to you as soon as I have anything. Hold on. Thank you. Frisco, what if I get you some water? Do you think that'll sour your stomach? I don't know. I couldn't hurt. Okay, I'll get it. I'll be right Frisco. Poisonous. It's Tony. 
She's up on the seventh floor, and I'm going to go up there and see what's going on. You can't. Who's going to stop me? Dr. Hardy. What? Mm -hmm. You've got to talk to Frisco. He's off to see Tony. What? You're not going anyplace, Frisco. Why not? You're hardly in any condition to climb seven flights of stairs. <laughs> then my pregnant sister-in-law can make it upstairs. I think I'm going to be able to manage. i got to find out what's going on. Come on, Frisco. Hey, Frisco, come on now. Wait a second. You can't handle this. Oh, you can't your head, will you? Will you cheer up? He'll be fine. I don't understand. What is it that's taking them so long to get him down here? It's probably crazy out there. That's exactly what I'm worried about, Holly. Well, I'm sure he's under the best of care wherever he is. I gotta see him. Oh, Georgia, what, where is he? We just brought down the last of the patients from ICU, including your husband. So where is he? He's on the third stretcher coming down the corridor. Is he going to be all right? He's going to be fine. I got to see him. Mm -hmm. He'll be here in a moment. My old Dania? Just arrived. any change in your brother, Frisco, we'll let you know. Well, how are you going to find out if you're down here? Because we're in touch with ICU. Come on, sit down. That's not good enough. I want to see for myself. Well, at least wait until the elevators are operating again. That could be ours. I'll walk. No. Now, look, Frisco, I want you to sit down. You're in no shape to climb stairs. Sit down. But I know myself, and I'm fine. Good, good. But uh, we'll let you go on up there as soon as the fire chief says it's okay. I can find my own way. Thank you. The last thing Tanya needs is someone else sick without anyone else. Where's the fire chief? Felicia's right. Your brother's well taken care of. And why is everybody trying to keep me from seeing him? Because you're not up to it. You've got to save yourself for later when Tony and Tanya need your strength. You're not going to be any good to either one of them if you're laid up in a hospital bed. I'm not any good to him now, either. <laughs> Dr. Hardy, may I speak with you a moment? Yes, of course. What is it? Well, apparently, all this smoke is some kind of hoax. Hoax? What do you mean? Perhaps it's an April Fool's joke. Are you telling me there's, there's no fire? Not that we could find. Nothing in the walls? Not a trace. Well, what about the vents or the electrical equipment? Oh, well, we came up with smoke. We've searched everywhere. We came up with no indication of fire in this hospital. Thank goodness. That's, that's wonderful. I can't tell you how relieved I am. Uh, this is going to be thoroughly investigated. Fine, fine. But I can tell you one thing. I'd sure like to get my hands on the joker who pulled this stunt. Captain Ramsey. Attention all officers. An attempt was just made on Dr. Jones's life. The assailant is dressed as an orderly. Seal off all exits, including the basement. No one, no one leaves this hospital until we found our man. Hey, that's my brother. We'll take care of it. Look, I gotta find that guy. Leave him to us. 
You just stay put. This is police business. 